I'm Fabiana Rodriguez, and today I'm the face of America. I believe that art and culture are essential to our society and that art and culture shape worldview and that worldview shapes politics and economics. And so art is what helps us understand each other. It's how we develop a perspective of the world around us, including how we interact with nature. And so art is not a nicety, it's a necessity because it is through art that we get exposed through ideas. Um, art is what can show us the future and it's no surprise that in the most um, oppressive regimes throughout the world, the governments went after the art. I mean, even here in the United States during the 80s, Reagan destroyed the art system and we're still feeling the impacts of it. But the other reason art is powerful is because it allows us to be in the shoes of another person. And as human beings, we are motivated and we are moved to action because of our emotional brains, not our rational brains. And so art speaks to our emotions unlike anything else, unlike science even. Uh, and when we can move people's emotion and we can, for example, show them the impacts of the climate crisis, or we can show them what it's like to be in a cage in solitary confinement, or we can help them experience what it feels like uh, to be sexually harassed. And when we share our stories, we can transform the world. And we've been seeing that, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, we've been seeing it with Me Too, is that when we can change culture, politics is next to follow. My whole life, I have been an artist. Um, and although I didn't go to art school, largely because of racism and inequality um, in the state that I grew up, uh, I believe in the power of art, and I grew up in Oakland, which is where the Black Panther Party was born. And so I was always exposed to politics when I was 16 years old. NAFTA was introduced in our country, and I, I became a young organizer um, against free trade policies, and I also organized against the prison industrial complex, which was very rapidly growing in my state. Um, I then uh, realized that it was critical to have art and social justice always working together. Uh, but as an organizer and as an activist, I always felt that the arts was something that was set to the side and that artists were treated sort of as um, a decorative element that we could easily just, you know, have an artist sing a song or have an art artist make something. And we were not truly integrating artists. And so in 2011, I founded an organization um, that helped take 50 artists to the U.S.-Mexico border. And this was the time when anti-immigration policy, especially in places like Arizona, was absolutely horrific. And when we took artists and we saw the power of what it does when artists are able to see with their own eyes what's happening at the border, they're able to see the wall, they're able to see um, what happens when migrants are found in the desert and their bodies are recovered, uh, they then are equipped to make a major impact. And when I realized that, I decided that, um, I, for, that I always needed to open doors for artists. Um, I needed to help artists become politicized and also organize artists um, in a way that we can be creating the music, the images, the writing that we're going to help um, our revolution. Art is really the language of critique and it's the language of uncovering and discovering the truth and also what motivates us as human beings. And when we delve into the arts and when we learn how to analyze and how to um, look from a different perspective. That allows us to question everything around us, right? Um, when I was young and I uh, first learned about the feminist movement um, through music, or I would listen to hip hop in the 80s and I would hear when they would say the words, fuck the police, right? 
that was another perspective. And that helped open my eyes. And so artists naturally are critical thinkers and they naturally question everything. And the issue is that at the global level, we are experiencing a culture and a system of capitalism, of domination and extraction of workers, of animals and of the planet. This is, this, our system is why we have, we are in the age of war, in the age of pandemic. We are in the age when governments cannot take care of their people. This, and, and in the age of patriarchy, this is what happens when men lead, is that men drive us to war, to a lack of solutions, to being sick, to having a global uh, crisis of sex trafficking. Sex trafficking is the second largest illegal industry in the world, right? Guns being the first. And that, that form of government that we are now exposed to at a global level has to go. And it has, and, and, and I think that people can't imagine anything else, but artists can't. Artists are able to actually imagine something that is not yet here. And that is our superpower, is that we can see, we can feel, and we question. And conservatives don't like this because conservatives are attached to a global worldview in which men dominate, in which we extract from the earth, and in which we don't respect all genders, and that we treat nature like a commodity that is endless. And conservatives are attached to a worldview that right now at the global level is dying. And it's time for it to die because it's actually gonna lead us to our to the end of humanity if we don't stop it. Um, and so I think that right now is a tremendous time for artists. And when I think about artists, I also include entertainers for people in sports, for writers, for um, all forms of creativity because precisely now when our old system of capitalism can no longer function in the way that it did before. I mean, you have people at home, a lot of people at home. Um, you have attentive audiences like you've never had before. And now is the time to insert a new kind of idea and to inspire people to know that we do not have to live under this system.